Hi, Justin with Seaboard Marine. We're here today in our brand new studio to talk about zincs. So we've got some zincs here. We're going to talk about sizing zincs. We're going to talk about what zincs you're going to need for your engine. And we're going to talk about installing zincs. Okay, so first thing, zinc sizes. Our convention is to go off of the pipe thread size. And one thing that you might know, notice is a, a half inch pipe thread, that's a nominal dimension. So this is a half inch zinc, but it actually measures, oh, three quarter, almost seven eighths of an inch. You can see there, that's a half inch. Three eighths measures about five eighths of an inch, you can see there. And then there's a three quarter zinc. So. Um, we sell all of our zincs. If you order a half inch zinc, what you're going to get is a zinc that has a half inch nominal pipe thread. When you go to install the zinc, the first thing you need to do, make sure that the zinc is inside the brass plug securely. There's a couple ways you can do that. One way, you can take your chances, but if you um, and put it in a vise or a crescent wrench and a, use a pair of channel locks, you can tighten it up a bit, and if you get this just right, um, it'll secure it and it won't come loose. Uh, but if you, if you don't go tight enough, it could come loose, and if you go too tight, these things break really easy. The zincs themselves are actually very fragile, it's not the strongest metal. So one of the things that we recommend is to put Loctite on the threads, on these threads, and put it in the plug, and snug it up firmly, just a little bit tighter than hand tight. When you go to install your zinc, you need to make sure that the threads are clean and free of corrosion. You may need to run a tap a taper pipe thread tap through the hole and just clean up the threads a little bit. Not, the idea is not to remove a lot of material, but just to clean them up so you have a nice sealing surface so that the taper threads can, can seal sufficiently. Now one of the big controversies when it comes to zincs is whether or not to put some sort of thread sealant. And you can see here this zinc, installed by Brendan, has some rector seal in it. Some people will claim that by having thread sealant there, whether it's Teflon tape or Rector Seal or whatever, that it's going to inhibit or insulate, electrically insulate these two surfaces from one another. Our friend Rob Sheppis put this to the test and he put together a nice little article um, that I can share with you guys. And he um, tried every different kind of thread seal, Rector Seal, Teflon tape, he even used black electrical tape. And in all instances, he showed that there's good continuity between the zinc and whatever it's threaded into. And I'll, I'm not going to recreate his entire experiment here, but you can see here I have a multimeter. And this, this one you can clearly see was installed with a lot of rector seal. And you can see right off the bat, no problem. So we have continuity. And if you're worried that, oh, well, maybe we don't have as much continuity or maybe it's blocking some of the current flow, the amount of current that flows in a zinc is so minuscule. In any continuity between these surfaces, the zinc's going to be able to do its job. Once you're ready to actually install your zinc, you need to watch out for the length of the zinc. In some locations, the zinc will bottom out. In other words, the end of the zinc will hit something before the thread seats and makes a good seal. One of the common places we see this is with the 6BTA heat exchanger. The end of the zinc will hit the threaded hole for the end cap on the heat exchanger. Now, uh, what you can do in that case is just cut a little bit off the zinc. And you can do that, just put the zinc in a, in a vise and cut it with a hacksaw, or even a, probably a grinder would work, but whatever, you just gotta cut a little bit off the zinc. So you, you might wanna take and, and use a pencil or something and stick it in the hole and hold your finger on it. Make sure you have enough depth in that location for that zinc. So the last thing to talk about here is wh how many zincs you need for your engine. And so there, uh, Sim simply you could just go around and count the number of zincs you have. You know, if you're not, if you don't, not familiar with the zinc, they look like this when they're installed, so they just look like a cap. So there's not a lot of these type of plugs on your engine that don't have a zinc in them, but there, there could be. But if you count up those, that'll give you a pretty good indicator. If you have a stock configured engine, the 4BTA requires three half inch zincs. The 6BT only requires one half inch zinc. The 6BTA requires three half inch zincs. The QSB59 requires three half inch zincs. The QSB6.7, two half inch zincs, and three 3.8 zincs. And the QSC8.3, 
four half inch zincs and two three eight zincs. The QSL, three half inch zincs and the QSM11 with the dry manifold is three half inch zincs and three three eight zincs and the earlier models only take two. When you go to order your zincs, another consideration is whether or not you have the factory gear oil cooler which has no provision for zincs or one of our upgraded gear oil coolers which typically has a provision for a zinc and so you might want to verify the number and size of zincs on your gear oil cooler. Thanks for watching our videos. If you guys are liking these videos, please comment, subscribe, and like, and share with your friends. As long as you guys are watching, we're going to keep making them.